This is where we left off last time. We were leaving Kruger Park and we started driving towards Pozzulu Natal and Easy Mangaliso. We had to go around this Watini because to enter the country you need to get a dedicated visa and it was just faster in this way. But at least we saw this part of South Africa as well and it was amazing. At some point we crossed areas full of the same kind of trees. It was wood plantations. They went on and on and on for hundreds of kilometers. Crazy. We had to drive for about 9 hours to get to our destination, which is Easy Mangaliso Wetland Park. This is the third largest protected area in South Africa and it spans for 280 kilometers along the coast on the Indian Ocean. And then, after going through a rail crossing without any barrier, we had our first stop to Vayane Cultural Village. But me, I speak Zulu, I'm a Zulu. So I, uh, I'm going to speak Zulu. Do you know any, just a single word in Zulu? No. Ibo Bezi. The only way like We are at the back of the Zulu village. This is the back of the Zulu village. This gate is called Intuba. Intuba used to be for people who live in the village. We are not allowed to use Intuba gate, so we will use the front one, this way. Zanbon. Uh, uh, they are greeting us, they are saying Sanbona, they are saying hi. To respond to Sanbona, we say Yebo. Yebo. Ninjan. He's asking, uh, how are you doing? To say uh, we are fine, we say Sia Pila. Sia Pila. Sia Pila. Sia Pila, not. He's asking, are you here to visit us? Oh? Are you here to visit us? Yeah. Yes. We say yeah, boys. Yes is yeah, boys. Yeah, boys. We have yeah, to go to the bar. In Goloba. In Goloba. In Goloba. In Goloba. In Goloba, we used to storage of food. We used to store food inside the Goloba, taking it away from the ground, uh, from processing it from animals, and also to keep the food dry, keep the maize dry, and also to keep it dry. Easy fire is where we keep our kettles. We keep our kettles, cows, goats, and sheep. We keep them here inside the crop. There's the reason why uh, this easy fire has to be in the middle of the village is because uh, for safety purposes, in order to keep our cows safety, we have to keep them in the middle of the village. And also, we believe that when a man has passed away, especially the leader, when a leader of the village has passed away, his soul will come then to live inside the craft. So, in order for the ancestors to protect the whole village, they must stay in the middle of the village. Yes. And today we're exploring uh, Easy Mangaliso Wetland Park. We will see how it is, what it has to offer, how it looks. And we're mostly looking for birds. And also, of course, always rhinos, but very hard. We'll see. We hope so.
this is quite nice. This is um, looking very good. Uh, it's uh, a wetland, so it's a uh, wet zone. And as usual, the wet areas are uh, the most biodiverse areas that there are, basically. So there's a lot of life around. It's very nice. We are currently walking on a trail here. You can do that. There's many points where uh, you can go on trails and uh, go to lookouts or hideouts. And that is the Indian Ocean. Yep. Uh, there's a nice view. It's uh, quite good. Uh, you're quite high, so there's uh, a good view of this side of the park. Uh, but that's mostly it, basically. Of course, the probability to uh, see some animals is quite unlikely in the end. There's people making noises, uh, so on and so forth, going back and forth all day, so unlikely. And now apparently we're going to the beach. There's uh, a way to get down of the car and uh, go directly to the sea. It's a marine protected area. That's also another environment that you can see here in Easy Mangalizo. And now let's try this hideout. Oh, we've never seen one before here. Let's see how it is, if it's a good hideout or not. There's a lot of wind today, so not easy to see things because there's waves. We then went back to the car and kept exploring the park until... And that, ladies and gentlemen, it's Orion. It's a bit far, steep. So yes, that back there is a rhino. Uh, we think it's uh, a black rhino. We finally saw a rhino. <laughs> We're definitely very happy and it's wonderful, it's amazing. We hit jackpot. Uh, right after the rhino that we saw before, uh, we found the other two rhinos with a baby rhino. One is the, the mom with the baby rhino. The other one is a male. Who, after some time, got close. Uh, he was probably trying to get him to better know Mama Rhino. She wasn't, let's say, agreeing with the idea. So, here they are. So, what's the difference between a black rhino and a white rhino? The easiest way to tell them apart is by their lips. Black rhinos have pointy lips. They use them to browse leaves for eating. While white rhinos have straight lips that use to graze grass. So, we can see that our rhinos have straight lips and they graze grass. Therefore, they are white rhinos.
So basically, we had spotted them from far away. We saw that there was the Bibirino, uh, but we couldn't see it. Basically, uh, for, for a long time, so we couldn't understand why. We thought it was hiding behind the mom. But actually, what it was doing, it was just throwing himself uh, on the ground and uh, getting some rest. And then when the mom was too far for his likings, he just <laughs> goes back to the mom and then once again resting on the field. After a few hours, we left the rhinos to go towards the coast, where we met a lot of monkeys. Let's go to the beach, part two. The beach was really beautiful over here, though it was very windy and the ocean was quite rough. Then, we couldn't resist stopping again with our rhino friends before leaving the park. Uh, this was definitely a beautiful experience. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. So happy to have finally seen rhinos and also seen a lot of different variations on uh, this wetland environment, but the tiny rhino wins always. We left Easy Mangaliso and we went towards our next adventure the day after. And today we are going to look for whales. Yep. Now I know what you're thinking. Why a tractor? Well, that's a good question that we had as well. In the end, the point is that we were still inside a protected area, and though the beach was wonderful, there were no harbors in sight. So we got on the boat and the tractors pushed us into the water. two problems. How to get back on land, and remember the ocean the day before? The day after wasn't much different, and it was very hard to keep a steady shot even for pictures. Leave alone for video. Anyway, we saw so many humpback whales, it was stupid. Many of them were also jumping out of the water, and we are so sorry about the low quality of the footage, but the ocean was almost unnavigable that day. Now to the first problem, how to get back since there's no harbor. Well, easy, just put both engines on full power and land the boat on the shore. No joking, that's what's actually happening. 